Okay, in this video I'd like to continue on with my tutorials on quantum statistics. This is video number 39 and I'd like to draw your attention to my website universityphysicstutorials.com. So I'm going to derive the Fermi Dirac distribution function. In the previous video to this is number 38 where I proved the Gibbs factor, okay, which takes into account, it's different from the Boltzmann factor because it takes into account the movement of particles. Now the probability then of, of a state occurring is 1 over z times g or z is the grand partition function or the sum of the Gibbs factors. In addition, video number 30 I derived previous to this the Fermi Dirac distribution and the difference however this I'm doing it a different way this time I'm going to use only the Gibbs factor and the grand partition function whereas here it was all due to it was all down to multiplicities and to be honest it was a pain, of, a pain in the face Number 29, by the way, I, I showed what alpha and beta are. That's what you need for video 30. The point of this video is that using the grand partition function makes calculating or deriving these distributions so much easier. All right, so this is the second way of doing it. This is the second take on it, shall we say. So let's think about fermions, okay? So for fermions, the occupancy is one or zero. In other words, a fermion no two fermions can have the same state, so the state can't be occupied by more than one, or that's it. So the, there are only two possible ways the state can be occupied. That means the probability of a state of a state n occurring is equal to one over z, where z is the grand partition function or sum of the Gibbs factors, e to the minus. Uh, we have e minus mu times n over kt. Okay, but let's think about it. We're talking about quantum quantization of energy, therefore E is equal to N, uh, N times epsilon, the number of particles with energy epsilon. And of course, beta is equal to 1 over kT. So if we want to rewrite this probability as equal to 1 over the grand partition function, E to the minus N times E minus mu beta. Okay, that's just another way of writing it. And I'm sure you're already recognizing what's going on here. Okay, we have E minus mu, uh, you, I'm sure you know what's going on. So, in order to calculate the grand partition function, we need to get the sum of all these probabilities. Okay, z is equal to the sum over s, or the sum over n actually is what I'm doing here. Sum over n of p of n, like that. That's what the grand partition function is. So, let's go ahead and calculate the grand partition function. It's easy because of the occupancies, 1 or 0. So, z is the sum over n of p of n. Well, that's going to be very simple. It's going to be e to the minus 0, epsilon minus mu, times beta, and plus e to the minus 1, epsilon minus mu beta, because the occupancy n is either 1 or 0. Simple. Okay? So, of course, z then, of course, is going to be equal to 1 plus e to the minus e minus mu beta. Like that. Great. So now we have the... Uh, the partition function, that means the probability of state n occurring is equal to e to the minus n, the number of particles in the state, epsilon minus mu beta, divided by a grand partition function, which is e to the minus epsilon plus mu beta plus 1. Oh, sorry, that's a minus. What am I doing here? There, that's a minus there. All right? That's the probability of something occurring using the grand partition function and the Gibbs factor. So how do we step from there to the Fermi Dirac distribution? Well, it's not a big step, believe it or not. So I said a moment ago that the probability of state n occurring is equal to e to the minus n epsilon minus mu beta divided by 1 plus e to the minus epsilon minus mu beta, like that as well. Okay, so we define the occupancy as being the average number of particles in a state. So the occupancy, we're going to give it f of e. I'm sure you've seen that before as well. So because we're talking about n at the moment, we'll leave it as f of n. That means f of n is the average number in, in, in a state. So this is 
we've talked about average values, you can look at my video on average values if you like. The sum over n times n times, uh, with the product n times the probability of that occurring. That's just average, look at my video on average values if you don't understand that. That's pretty straightforward. Plug in what we have, that just becomes 0 times the probability of 0 plus 1 times the probability of 1 equals, of course, the probability of 1. So that going, that's equal to e to the minus epsilon minus mu beta divided by 1 plus e to the minus epsilon minus mu beta. And if we divide across by e to the minus epsilon minus mu beta, we have that the Fermi Dirac distribution is equal to 1 over e to the epsilon minus mu beta plus 1. Call that the Fermi Dirac distribution or occupancy function, and it's uh, it's used for fermions, which are it, they do not have integer spin. Okay, and just just a note on this to tie it in. What we, we've probably seen before, I've said this a few times. To get the total number of particles, you integrate n of epsilon d epsilon to get the uh, total energy, or the, the excuse me, the average energy for a single particle, you integrate n of epsilon times epsilon d epsilon. To get the total energy, we have n times n of epsilon like that. Okay, and oh, that's that's right. Of course, excuse me, that is correct. But what I haven't added in is that n of epsilon is where n of epsilon is equal to the density of states times the occupancy function. Okay, so if you don't understand that, look at my video called density of states, occupancy, and number, density of states, number density, occupancy, and I explain that there. So, thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my channel, and please check out universityphysicstutorial.com.